do you think? Uh, I mean, there are lots of high-profile cases related to the work of the Russian spy network, networks uh, in Eastern Europe, Europe especially. And uh, yeah. how do you think? Where do they mostly settle, and in which areas? Because uh, from what we know from Western European countries, there are lots of even cultural centers that were used like a spy networks, actually. So what do you know about these cases, for example, in Poland and in Western Europe? European countries? You know, I think that there are various areas in which, you know, Russian uh, aggressors try to, you know, to, to, to build their position, try to, you know, to, 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 to communicate in a way which, you know, which favorize, which could be in favor of Russian aggression. For sure, culture is, is one of the one of the leading, leading fields. But other, uh, you know, economics, you know, new technologies, but also sports. I, I, I am now in Krakow, and we have uh, experienced, you know, many times this form of, um, I would say, you know, aggressions. And it's not very, uh, it's, it's sometimes it's, it's really hard to, you know, to react in a proper way. Because all the time you can hear in Poland about good Russians. And these good Russians say, no, we cannot uh, look at us as, as a part of this, let's say, aggression state. We are just people. So we expect respect, so, so we cannot judge us. So this is something which makes the things even, even worse, because it's hard, you know, to precisely define what means good Russians and bad Russians. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's one more very difficult but very important question. It's the question of big money. So big money hides big crimes. And uh, how do Russian hide, still hide their money in European Union countries, especially in Western European Union countries? Do you know the situation with these cases? Yeah, you, you're absolutely right. You have raised very, you know, important and uh, important question. I think that in, in Poland, in my country, there is actually there is no acceptance and there is no room for, you know, for such, you know, practices. But other countries, mainly in the in the West, in in the in the uh, in the in, in the countries like Spain, Germany, or Portugal, I know that there's a kind of, you know, acceptance for such for for for, for, for such, you know, bad practices. But once again, I would like to say and stress it to one again. Uh, Evil must be named Evil. We cannot accept such practices. And I think that European Union should to be more integrated and should, you know, take a more firm, uh, you know, firm stance on that. You know, I've talked to um, one of the um, professors from Estonia uh, uh, several uh, minutes ago, and uh, um, they surely understand and remember the historical contest of occupation of their country by Soviet Union. They know about the Russian-speaking groups uh, in their countries, what can do, and that's why they um, restricted the visas for Russian citizens uh, for now during the war, and there are much more restrictions in Inside the country, the situation changes. Uh, I think monthly. Uh, but what about restrictions in Poland, for example, with migrants? Uh, do you need some more restrictions uh, in order to avoid any threats and potential uh, destabilization of your country? What's doing in this case by your government? Yeah, you know, it's a difficult question. The answer will probably be both yes and no. Why? In absolute terms, such restrictions can be seen as undemocratic because they arbitrarily limit civil liberties. On the other hand, Russia is waging war, acting aggressively and killing innocent people. Can democracy be the response to, to, to such actions? It's a serious dilemma that you have to deal with. Personally, I believe that even if they may bear the characteristic of some undemocratic actions for some, this dilemma should be dispersed when we look at the sacrifice made, the, made by, by, by Ukraine and its citizens. Uh, you know that Russia never forgive uh, and they uh, always talk about this. And uh, unfortunately, we hear more and more aggressive wars towards uh, even the country's NATO. And uh, actually, we heard a lot of words, rough words from uh, propagandist Russian television towards uh, Warsaw, towards, towards Poland. And um, I want to ask you, um, you are the country of NATO, but still you have threats from Russia. And how do you think in this hard, difficult situation, 
and, and including all these threats. Is Russian world, or as we say, Ruski Mir, possible in the countries of Eastern Europe, except for Baltic countries? You know, I, I think that, you know, I, I know it, 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 can, it, it may sound a little bit strange, but, but we have, you know, get accustomed to this kind of threat. In Poland, we have uh, decided, you know, to stand with Ukraine. And uh, as a consequence of that, we have be prepared for everything. And I think, I, 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 I'm sure that we as a nation, we as a Pole, we, we never, we know, will be, you know, threatened by this, you know, we will be afraid by, by this threat. Of course, we are aware of the consequences. But, but, but once again, we must wake up and call things but name. You know, as I said, Evin must be named Evin. We share the same culture, we share the same democratic value. So it's our moral obligation to stand with Ukraine. But still there is a so-called diplomatic language. So I would like to uh, pass to some deeper questions, the questions of diplomacy. And I have the information about this. 45 Russian diplomats left Poland in March after accusation of espionage. Uh, the Polish government announced its uh, intention uh, to expel 45 Russian diplomats on suspicion of espionage, writes uh, uh, Rzecz Paspolita. The uh, list of the Polish internal security agency included uh, 45 names that allegedly carried out legal activities on the territory of Poland. Uh, the ambassador of the Russian Federation of, to Poland, Sergei Andreev, denied these accusations, saying that uh, there are no grounds for such a decision. So my question is, um, how diplomatic uh, uh, and political lobby inside the country looks like right now? How does it look during the year of the war in Ukraine, if it exists still? You know, I think that all over this, you know, barbaric war, the public you know, opinion in Poland have been evolving. Now, I think it, it would be you know, extremely hard to say that someone in Poland is in favor of Russia, is against Ukraine. No, in public sphere, there are you know, very, very rarely, you know, I would say, phenomena. As a nation, we are really, you know, we are integrated. And there is no in public space, in public discourse, you know, any appears or, you know, argumentation which would allow to anyone to, to, to believe that Russia is, 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 is the Russia is, 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 doing, is, is doing good. No, no. In Poland, uh, I think there's no acceptance for such, you know, such uh, opinion. And what's more, the government is taking, you know, a very strict, you know, measures in case even such, you know, such, uh, such, you know, thoughts, such ideas uh, appear. In uh, this difficult and uh, very tense situation, and especially in uh, politic, politic, political, globally, uh, should we still leave uh, a window of opportunity for diplomatic talks with Russia at this stage of war in Ukraine? And how it can look, actually, because Putin doesn't uh, have any intentions to talk to other politicians of the world. You know, I think that there are you know, various uh, ways you can solve, you know, you can solve problems. Uh, also, when we are talking about war, this barbaric war, and of course, I, I wouldn't exclude, you know, uh, diplomatic ways. But what is important for me, the rules, you know, the, the, the preconditions for discussion, for for, for negotiation, sh should be sh 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 should be formulated by Ukraine. And what's more, this uh, let's say this uh, precondition should be supported or should have a strong support. From, 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 you know, a democratic international community. So I cannot accept situation in which Russia is laying down, you know, uh, conditions for negotiation. Uh, more difficult question, but still I want to ask you, um, is it possible um, to legally regulate all the communications and actions of Russians that are in the European Union right now? Or is this uh, kind of game that's going out of any rules on any sides during all this year of war in Ukraine? 
you know, I think that there is still some room, you know, to impose more, let's say, hard, uh, hard, you know, sanction on, on Russia. And uh, I, I do believe that it's a good way, you know, to force them, you know, to consider in a very appropriate way the for for the the, 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 the ways of, of negotiation. And, you know, just, you know, to cut a long story short, yes, I do believe there's a space, and I think that one day Russia will find it's in a position just to accept conditions for negotiation formulated by, 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 by Ukraine, supported by the international alliance. How wide uh, there is the um, presence of Russian interests uh, for now, for this uh, year, for this month in the European Union still? And what risks are associated with this presence of uh, Russian interests in the EU? Of course, you know, we are aware that there are some countries which, you know, which countries which have a very strong, you know, business relations with, with Russia. No doubt about that. And of course, for, for them, it's, it's much harder, you know, to redefine their uh, political, you know, political goals and priorities. But one against European Union would be a strong unity acting, you know, together. Otherwise, we, we lose. R R Russians, are, I think they are masters in, you know, diplomatic games, also dirty games. And uh, this is something which really worries me. And, you know, it's something which we should take into account. But on the other hand, I think when, when I look at the European Union, that, you know, public opinion, the, 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 the public opinion is evolving and, you know, Every month, you know, uh, more and more people also from Western Europe look in a very positive way at uh, uh, your country, or your fight. And, you know, it's, 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 I would say, I, I, I would say these people, I you know, these people admire your, your, your braveness and your determination, uh, determination in, in war against this Russian aggression.